I like yeah. that, Whoopi. And you know, it's interesting that a, lo a lot of the English language has to be rethought. Blackmailing is negative. <clears throat> Black sheep, negative. Um, I can think of a few others if I had the, the time, but those words are right. kind of like embedded in our psyches and maybe need well, to be changed. Why is a black sheep well, we can't. a bad thing and a white sheep is a good thing? Why? They're just sheep. Well, it's not the words. It <laughs> It's not the words, it's the way we think about it. There's nothing wrong with black cats or black yeah. sheeps or black people. You know, there we have it. Mary, first of all, Stroy, let me say thank you for doing the show. Thank you for your book. You're my hero, or they say Shiro these days. How much uh, will a Hillary endorsement help Joe Biden's campaign? In many ways, I was having Zooming with some friend of mine the other day, who's a big, you know, Democrat, left of center, and he said, I just, I just can't stand her. And I said to him, you are a sexist. To me, there is no reason, the only reason you don't like her, I said to him, is because she's female. You've been an outspoken voice in the uh, changing conversation about beauty also. You're so pretty. Thank you. Um, so at the Miss Universe pageant on Sunday, the winner, uh, Sosie Beanie Tunzi. I said that right? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's her name. <laughs> she, she's the Miss South Africa. Mm -hmm. She said, I grew up in a world where a woman who looks like me with my kind of skin and my kind of hair was never considered beautiful. So do her words resonate with you at all? I mean, I can't imagine that you were ever not considered beautiful. <laughs> you know? I know. Why, thank you. Uh... Republicans and Democrats are united in their applause for the news that a military operation in Syria took down the number one most wanted terrorist in the world, ISIS leader, Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi. So can we at least agree that the world is a better place without this guy in it? Who, oh, Trump or the Baghdadi? <laughs> Which one? Which one do you think? There was one small thing. You were saying, what's some good news? Mm -hmm. This is a tiny thing that I noticed. Uh, you remember Richard Spencer? He's basically mm -hmm. the organizer of Unite the Right, Lunatic. the white nationalist group that was marching in Charlottesville. It was all in for Trump. Not anymore. Here's his really? quote. He tweeted last night, I deeply regret voting for and promoting Donald Trump in 2016. Oh, my gosh. Wow. I'd like to talk about who we're running against. A billionaire who calls women fat broads and horse-faced lesbians. And no, I'm not talking about Donald Trump. I'm talking about Mayor Bloomberg. <laughs> Democrats are not going to win. If we have a nominee who has a history of hiding his tax returns, of harassing women, and of supporting racist policies like redlining and stop and frisk. Aside from Senator Warren, is there any... Is there anything that stood out last night to you all? Well, I, I have a couple of things I thought. Bloomberg tanked, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, but I think he will be better in a debate with Trump than he is with a bunch of uh, uh, judgmental Democrats, which I was watching last night. Um, because then it's uh, racist against racist, sexist against sexist, rogue against rogue. And it's very hard for them to go after each other because they're both guilty about the same things. So maybe then we can have a conversation about climate change, about immigration, about foreign affairs, about gun safety. That's one thought I had. This weekend, someone sent me this, this video of, uh, of uh, Mayor Bloomberg when uh, he was announcing actually an initiative, an initiative for uh, black and, and, and brown men. And I think it was a million dollar, several million dollar initiative. I think we have that clip. There's this enormous cohort of black and Latino males aged, let's say, 16 to 25 that don't have jobs, don't have any prospects, don't know how to find jobs, don't know uh, that they, what their skill sets are, don't know how to behave in the workplace where but they let, have to work let collaboratively me if I, let and collectively. Me if I... He was sued for saying um, there was a woman who was having trouble finding a nanny for her child, and he said, it's a blanking baby. It doesn't know the difference between you and anyone else. All you need is some black who doesn't even have to speak English to rescue it from a burning building. You know, all I have so to this say... Is, again, this is, but I'm just saying, you want right. to go up against Trump and you want to take the more high ground Democrats. I don't know if this guy is going to be the one. Well, I have to say, there are very fine people against, on both sides. That was in Charlottesville. Yeah. He said that uh, removing not, Confederate but, monuments but, was trying to take away our... But you want to take the moral Trump. high ground. Belittled the Black Lives Movement. 
He questioned whether Barack Obama. I'm not defending Trump was, because I'm attacking well, Bloomberg. But who are you? What are you saying then? Who I'm do you saying want to vote that, I'm for? saying that you're you shiny, you vote sparkly. For a Democrat, I'm so saying you're you shiny, for? sparkly guy who's surging right now. Which, by the way, everybody surges in primary politics. Well, yeah, I, I remember when that Gingrich out last did week. and Henry Ka Herman Cain did. Every candidate surges at one point or another. He because still thinks he's the a Central Park Five. Because he's guilty. a sparkly right, little. You know? Because you know what? I just think it's so interesting that you have a problem that we are talking about a candidate the way we would any other candidate. He just happens to be at the top, getting the attention right now, which is why we're talking. About right now, what I'm supposed to give Bloomberg a pass? Not on this show. Like not on this hall. I'd like to know who you're going to vote for. Well, who are you voting for? Who I vote for yeah. is none of your business. But I am not voting for Trump, and I'm sure as hell not voting for Bloomberg. So then, your former Senate staffer working for Joe Biden in 1993, Tara Reid, Tara Reid rather, claims that she was sexually assaulted by him back in 1993. And she says before she knew it, she was essentially pinned up against a wall that she remembers how cold the wall was behind her. And she says that the senator, uh, that Joe Biden, w was trying to kiss her, that he has his hands uh, on her, that, that his hands were going underneath her blouse and up her skirt. She says that her f his fingers went inside of her. And she says uh, that she pulled away. And she tells us that the senator seemed angry with her. She, according to, t to Tara Reid, says that uh, Joe Biden t said to her, come on, man, I thought you liked me. So this accuser says that she is a, quote, hardcore Democrat and that she is not playing politics. But her story is now being used by the Trump campaign. So uh, let's not forget that Trump has been accused by multiple women, over 15, of sexual assault, um, which he denies, of course. On the other hand, there's some, another issue that I would like. Like, if we're in the middle of this Tara Reid uh, accusing Biden of sexual assault. Are we supposed to believe her just because she's a woman? To me, if you say, I believe any woman who makes any accusation, uh, if you say that, I think it minimizes our credibility as women. And, and then nobody's going to believe anybody at some point. So these things have to be thoroughly investigated, thoroughly vetted. I, I would like to have all 24 of the women who are accusing Trump of sexual assault be vetted and let's hear from them also. Let us hear from, we heard from Tara, let's hear from them. We heard from Matt now, let's hear from the woman again. I mean, everybody has to have a voice in this. Um, I, I mean, I, I feel as though it can be used as a political cudgel against a political rival. And that, I think, is dangerous. Kind of like with Brett Kavanaugh. S Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh continued to completely deny the sexual assault allegations against him in a Fox News interview with his wife Ashley by his side. Take a look. I've never sexually assaulted anyone. Who do you believe? Whose side are you on? And I think it's okay to say you don't know. Mm -hmm. You don't know. The people, Let me ask you I something. I don't know. Adam. People are so clinging yeah. on to their Why side. do you suppose a woman like that would put her life in jeopardy the way she has if she was, was in a guilty? Come forward. Why would she do that? I mean, she, her, her, she had to move out of her house. She knew that she would be attacked on all fronts by this judiciary, just like they attacked Anita Hill. She knew exactly what was going to happen to her, and yet she did it. Evidence matters. Well, we should yes. hear. We should well, hear women I have jump and believe the problem, before we know. Yeah, but see, the, the problem what with that, happen. Abby, is that sometimes they there is not always forensic evidence in these cases. I just think it's Megan. interesting that we believe all women now, and we didn't believe uh, it's entirely different tune that was being sung earlier this year in the Brett Kavanaugh hearings. All I'm, all I'm saying, so I'm, all I'm, I'm saying I'm, is, you don't, you don't, uh, or ipso facto, believe somebody just because they I don't, make an I'm accusation. I'm not a believe all woman person. I never have been. I'm very and consistent investigated. on this. And again, Fiction. if he was running against Abraham Lincoln, he'd have an issue. But right. he's not. <laughs> exactly, he's not. The other thing, the other thing about Biden, <laughs> I believe, I believe that he has a certain amount of Teflon ability. Yeah. Mm. You know that mm. people know him and they know the gaffes and they know that he screwed up with Anita Hill and they know that he's touchy feely and he didn't mean it. Everything has been out there already, yeah. and we're still voting for him in big numbers. That's and, what Trump supporters yeah. say about him. The, fine, yes. <laughs> but here's what's interesting: it must, it must be killing Trump. Trump, that none of the names that he calls Joe Biden have stuck. He calls him Sleepy Joe, Grandpa Joe, Creepy Joe. Uh, he's trying to portray Joe Biden as something that he's not, and it's not sticking. There's not the misogyny that Hillary got 
Uh, you know, there's not the history with uh, uh, Clinton that Hillary had to live with. Uh, this guy is Joe Biden. He's Uncle Joe. Everybody likes him and people trust him. So maybe his numbers right. are going down. Maybe Biden uh, is not as exciting, but he's great and we love him and he's doing well. But remember the voter suppression and Russian interference. Those are the things that will destroy this country because they will put him in for another right. four years. You may not know Hillary Clinton will be here on Wednesday to talk about her highly anticipated book, What Happened? What Happened? But excerpts have already leaked out, and she's kind of blaming Bernie for doing last-minute damage to the campaign, and here's what Bernie said about it on Stephen Colbert mm -hmm. last night. We need her help to go forward. Let's not keep arguing about 2016. Let's get together, take on Trump's desire to divide us up. Let's go forward with a progressive agenda. Ask her if she'll do that. Well, yeah, I love it. He didn't take the bait. And I, and I have to say, I applaud him for that. I love Just Bernie. Just moving the he, conversation forward. Yeah, but I, you know, I love Bernie, but why is he telling a woman to be quiet? I don't like that. He's not telling her to be quiet. He's telling her to look forward. Basically, that's what he's saying. Oh, no, come on. He's, he's saying, not... move on and, you know, and stop bitching. What he's well, saying is... You know what? She won the election by three million votes. She has a right she, to bitch. She didn't win the election. <laughs> She's picking on him, and he's answering and saying, you know what, this election is over, but the country has a future, and what happened in the past happened in the past. Now let's come together, let's work on policy, let's get things in order. She will have every she right to do book. that. Would I also let the woman sell why does book? He, You know what, let her take some responsibility then and say, I lost this election because of me. Stop blaming That's Obama, stop blaming yeah. everybody else. She did. Yeah, she does. And don't underestimate Hillary Clinton's power. She still has it. She oh, won yeah. by three million votes. I wouldn't. Absolutely. People yeah. still like her. And you know what, after that Howard Stern interview, Mm -hmm. We've seen the true Hillary. And I think She's it's fabulous. I think it's very. Hillary Clinton surprised a lot of people during a podcast interview where she gave this ominous forecast about the 2020 presidential election. Take a listen. I'm not making any predictions, but I think they've got their eye on somebody who's currently in the Democratic mm -hmm. primary and are grooming her to be the third party candidate. She's the favorite of the Russians. I, I'm, that, that's assuming Jill Stein will give it up, which she might not because she's also a Russian. Uh, asset. Oh. So most people oh. say she's clearly talking about candidate Tulsi Gabbard, and some other candidates are defending Tulsi getting called out. Mm -hmm. She I mean, tweeted back and called Hillary a warmonger. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that does not do anything for me. She hasn't denied it. She hasn't said anything in her tweets. How dare you? That's outrageous. Of course I'm not. She didn't say that. Mm -hmm. no. She's just going after Hillary. Mm -hmm. I don't say that Tulsi is an agent. I just think that she could be a useful idiot the way Trump is a useful idiot to the Russians. Yeah. Creating a couple of things out. I've never said, and I don't think Hillary Clinton thinks that you're a winning asset. You might be an unwitting asset. Not that that means you're stupid, but people can be used. Well, that, that's exactly what okay. it means, though. That's the exactly thing, what the it other means. Thing Let I me guess. start with um, how offensive it is to say that I am a witting or unwitting asset of a foreign country working against the interests of our people and our country, the not country that I am willing to lay my life down for. So if you're saying it's not deliberately, then you are implying it could be. that I am too stupid and too naive and lack the intelligence no. to know what I am doing. Well, Hillary that Clinton have nothing started to do it, and then you I shot am. back at her, boy. You <laughs> called her the queen of you, warmongers. You, you double down, unfortunately, you double down on the baseless accusations that she made that strikes at the core of who I am. I'm it, it's offensive to me as a soldier, as an American, as a member of Congress, as a veteran, and frankly, as a woman, to be so demeaned in such a way. But you called her the personification in, of rock. So demeaned She's a woman in such too. a way. Well, I'm pointing to the fact that she has continued this legacy of being the world's police around the world that has waged wars costing the lives of thousands of my brothers and sisters in uniform. I'm speaking out against that and What's to your change evidence that? to change Well, can I Are can you I, serious? Let's hear it. Are you let's, serious? Let's hear it. I served in the war Not in you, Iraq. Her. You're that saying she, that she's exactly she's a I war served in the war in that? Iraq. Yeah. that she championed. She championed a regime change war in Libya. Did you not believe Libya. in that war? I believe the lies that were told to us. Well, so did she. Uh, <laughs> um, if I may just go a little further, is there anyone you think who could actually beat him, really? Right beat now, him? right now, I think that uh, the only person that I see who has a base that's strong enough to oppose him uh, is Bernie. Bernie mm. Sanders. Yeah. Mm. Huh. Wow. 
Yeah. He's not. He, Biden has got bigger numbers, but the moment. Biden's got bigger. But I yeah. think that Bernie's base is more passionate. Hmm. I think they're more passionate. They, that's true. And I think that you know he's the complete antithesis of of what Trump represents. Yes, that's true. Yeah, Trump. but I think he's going to have to have a strong vice president. Mm -hmm. You know, because a lot of people see that his age and yeah. his health is a factor. Sure. Mm -hmm. So I think a strong vice president mm -hmm. could relieve some of the doubt that mm -hmm. exists. Maybe Amy Klobuchar. Thank you. Thank you.